one hit gang welcome back i'll talk if you listen episode 23 um really excited about this week's episode got some goodies for you guys to announce and i'm looking forward to uh both of the guests that we have on today so i'll get to that in just a second but first let's get the boring stuff out of the way first things first thanks for coming back another week you guys know i always appreciate you I'm actually recording in a different environment today. I'm actually not home. I don't have my normal microphone. I'm actually using the iPhone uh, headphones, the the one with the built-in mic. So if it sounds better, let me know because I'll probably go and use this going forward. Um, But if it sounds a little bit worse, I do apologize about that. And, uh, you know, next week we'll be be back uh, in our normal swing of things. So we hit a huge milestone, everyone. We hit one thousand downloads so as promised we will be doing another uh, another idle gift card giveaway uh this gift card giveaway will be just like the last ones now if you're a new listener i'll go over the uh what, what you have to do to participate and if you are a long time listener you already know the rodeo this this isn't your first rodeo so you, you know the deal already so with the idle gift card giveaway just as a thank you to you all i give you a 20 dollar gift card of your choice uh, raffle style. So basically you get entered into a raffle for a free $20 gift card and it um, it goes, you know, any gift card of your choice, by the way, most people have actually, everyone has chosen Amazon up until this point and the biggest reason for that is, you know, that can be emailed, you don't have to worry about it, about it being hand delivered, etc, etc. So, uh, obviously, that is uh, really convenient for me and really convenient for the recipient. But it can be anything you want. It could be Macy's. Heck, it could be Applebee's. Uh, you get a $20 gift card of your choice. So this is how you participate. All you have to do is let me know what your favorite episode is and why. Um, it doesn't have to be a long, thought-out, intricate response, although I do encourage that because I get a kick out of reading some of you guys' favorite things about the show and it'll uh, give me some joy in reading a long thought out answer but it doesn't have to be it could be hey my favorite episode was episode four because you talked about relationships it could be that simple and i'll go ahead and you know into you into the raffle now it'll be lazy uh, but it'll be simple um so you don't have to worry about uh, you know, being too intricate. So there are a few ways you can let me know. Of course, you can keep it old school and email me. I'll talk if you'll listen at hotmail.com. You can hit me up on Spreaker if you have a Spreaker membership. You can hit me up on Twitter via DM or you can tweet, I don't, uh, you, you know, whatever your episode, is, uh, favorite episode is with the hashtag idle gift card giveaway or you can just mention me in twitter you know with your favorite episode and i'll track down the tweet and enter you into the drawing uh, also you can uh, do the same thing on instagram you can type out what your favorite you know episode is and why take a picture of it so that way you can post it and you can tag me in the picture so i get the notification you can also hit me up directly on instagram and uh you know, DM me on Instagram. And for those of you who are unsure, the um, the email, the YouTube, the Instagram, the whole nine is, is always in the description of the show. But just to say it out loud here, the Instagram is the show's initials twice separated by an underscore. So it's I-T-I-Y-L underscore I-T-I-Y-L. On Instagram, I am Tim underscore I-T-I-Y-L. So Tim underscore the show's initials. You can track down this episode on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube and just go ahead and leave a comment in the YouTube section and I will go ahead and enter you into the raffle. Now, the final way to for you to get a bonus entry so you get two entries into the draw, drawing is if you're a patron. Um, if you've been listening to the show over the past couple of weeks, maybe the past month or so, you should know that I started a Patreon and I set a goal in there to get a new microphone so I can deliver some awesome quality to you guys. I'll give you some better sounding quality. And I have a couple of patrons and uh, these guys and girls have been very, very supportive. And um, I just want to find new ways to show how grateful I am and to show uh, that I'm really appreciative of the support that the patrons give me. So patrons, if you are a patron, you get an extra entry just for being a patron. 
So in other words, if you're a patron, let's take Briar, for example, who's been a huge help so far. Briar is one of my patrons. He will uh, get two entries if he lets me know what his favorite episode is and why. And just for being a patron. So he'll get two entries. So you can get more than two entries, uh, but you can get an extra entry if you are a patron. So just another bonus and another thank you to my patrons. So those are all of the ways that you can participate in the Idol gift card giveaway. Uh, be sure to, if you do do this on, fa um, I'm sorry, not Facebook, uh, Instagram or Twitter to include that hashtag idol gift card giveaway. So it's I T I Y L gift card giveaway for your chance to win. I'm going to be running this over the next couple of weeks or so. Um, for anyone who has participated in the gift card giveaway, you know, I kind of don't really put a timeline on it only because I want to give, uh, you know, an opportunity for a fair amount of entries to come in. I don't want to put myself in a position or put you guys in a position where there are only like three people in the drawing. You know, I want to give a good amount so that way we can uh, go ahead and, you know, get the ball rolling. So shout out to all of the winners so far. You know, shout out to Anthony. Shout out to Amanda uh, for the previous winners of the gift card giveaway. And uh, I look forward to crowning a new winner uh, in the coming weeks. So now that that's out the way, uh, everyone, um, I'm really excited to talk about the uh, upcoming topics. So if you well, well, first things first, before I even get started, I just want to say rest in peace to Aretha Franklin. Um, she passed away this week, uh, yesterday on Thursday. Um, I am recording this Friday morning, by the way. Uh, she she passed away, you know, yesterday. And, you know, my heart and condolences goes out to anyone affected. You don't have to be family to be affected by her loss. So I do want to sit here and say uh, shout out to uh, Aretha Franklin and rest in peace. Um, if you grew up on her music, you know, like I know that she was a very soulful woman. A lot of a lot of people, especially, you know, people, our parents and um, our parents, parents consider her a true diva. Uh, she had a lot of energy, a lot of spirit and a lot of spunk, even in her old age. And she uh, definitely was the archetype of what a true soulful woman should be like. So shout out to Aretha. Shout out to any fan of Aretha. Shout out to her family. And just for a tribute, how about you load up uh, Spotify or uh, Apple Music, wherever you listen to your music on, and just throw on your favorite Aretha track just in her memory. Um, so uh, uh, definitely do that for 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 your soul. Be good for your soul. Um, so on that note, just to move away from the sad note and just to talk about this week's topics. So this week, a young lady... By the name of Saudia Schuler, uh, if you've been paying attention to the news, if you've been paying attention to social media, uh, you know who Saudia is. If you live under a rock like me, you probably only know about this because of social media. So I just found out about this on Tuesday of this week. I was scrolling through my timeline. I was being a millennial and I was just on Facebook. And next thing you know, I see all these posts about, you know, black people shouldn't throw stones at people who commit fraud because they commit fraud too and i'm kind of like whoa what is this coming from and when i say my timeline got flooded the dam broke you know it was so much you know media coverage on this on my so on my timeline and even on instagram so i was like okay obviously if it's on social media it must have some validity right uh hashtag sarcasm so I go to look and I do some more research and I type in the young lady's name on uh, in Google and I see a bunch of national news about it. Um, you know, this made national news. So this young lady basically committed tax fraud um, and she was withholding funds from the government. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the story because um, like I mentioned in the video I released earlier this week, uh, if you really care about the story, if you really have some thoughts about the story, then uh, you'll go look it up yourself. Uh, so I don't want to spend too much time on the story. But just to give you a brief recap, a uh, short version of this is uh, last year sometime, uh, this young lady, Saudia, uh, made a name for herself by giving her a son, by giving her son a crazy send off for prom, crazy, crazy send off for prom. Uh, so basically she ordered uh she had $25,000 uh, worth of material and props, et cetera, et cetera, for her son's send off. 
She had three tons of actual sand. She had three exotic sports cars, um, including a Ferrari, I believe. She actually had an actual camel, um, not to mention uh, the money spent on the outfits. So she had this crazy send off. Um, who knows where she got the money from, but she had this crazy send off. And um, that kind of jump started her fame, her social media fame. And she used that fame and that momentum to start a restaurant and to also um, perform some charitable acts for the community. Things like a soup kitchen, um, things like, you know, food lines for the homeless. Uh, this past December, she hosted a block party, like a Christmas themed block party, I believe it was. And, you know, gave away some gifts to the, some underprivileged, things like that. I think she even did like a Thanksgiving Day basket, something along those lines. Uh, so she has contributed to the community. And a lot of people were upset to see this uh, woman of color, specifically a black woman, kind of go down in flames. And as I looked on my social media page, I saw people on two different sides of the fence. No, not too many people met in the middle on this topic. You had one side of the spectrum going, what she did was wrong. Um, you know, her charitable act should be diminished because she uh, committed fraud. Fraud is wrong. She withheld withheld funds from the government. Um, so basically, I'm sorry, just to backtrack a little bit. She was on disability. She had a lot of medical and health issues. Uh, so she was on disability and all the while working full time with her restaurant. Like like I mentioned earlier, she start she started a restaurant and she was in a restaurant business and she's running and operating her restaurant, making you know a ton of money. And she withheld, I believe it was like thirty seven thousand dollars to the government. She failed to report that to the government. So she she was on, you know, SSI, collecting money from the government for disability and also working while working and, you know, didn't report that money. So just to get back to the point, there were a lot of people saying, hey, what she did was wrong. If she really cared about the community in the first place, she shouldn't have been flaunting and bragging on social media. If she wasn't flaunting and bragging on social media, she would have never had got caught. If you're doing something for someone and you're being genuine about it, you wouldn't brag about it anyway, because the only person who needs to know about it are the people you're doing it for, uh, yada, yada, yada. Then you have some other people on the other side of the fence saying like, hey, this is just white people trying to bring, uh, bring back black people down. The government, the white government is holding us down. You know, laws are designed to, um, you know, prosecute and destroy black people and black culture. Uh, you have people who are saying like, hey, I don't know. I actually even saw one post that said, I don't know what it is in black people's DNA that causes them to bash other black women and hate on other black women or black people in general. And this side of the argument was saying that how, as black people, we should uplift and support one another and we should spend less time bashing uh, or demeaning or diminishing the good acts that black people and black women, um, you know, do for the community and do for the world and we you know we should spend more time uplifting uh these people people like saudi so as you can see two completely different extremes two completely different sides of the spectrum here and i posted if you're my friend on facebook um ap apologies to everyone who follows me on instagram i try to do it on instagram but I wanted to do it on my iPad because the iPad has a bigger screen and I can see you guys' comments better. But unfortunately, Instagram does not have an iPad app. So I decided to do it on Facebook instead. So that way I can see your comments a little bit better. Uh, although I do have a remedy for that in the future. So keep an eye out for that. But anyway, I did a video on Facebook. I did a Facebook Live video uh, this past Tuesday talking about this. And I got a lot of feedback from you all. I got a ton of views. So shout out to everyone who watched. Shout out to everyone who shared their opinion. Um, and I just want to let you guys know that um, the, the video is public. So if you do search for me on Facebook, I'm just Tim Brooks on Facebook. If you do search for me on Facebook, you can still watch the video. You can still leave a comment. So even though you're not my friend on Facebook, you can still watch the video. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, if you want to stop the, the podcast right now, go and look at the video. Uh, it's about 24 minutes long. It's a lot of what, what, what I talked about here. I did get a lot of people's opinion, uh, but I did uh, uh, launch a video and I talked about basically what I'm talking about now. And, you know, I, I got a lot of feedback, but I want to talk about two specific comments from two people. 
Um, one particular person said that, you know, um, one of the points that I made was I didn't understand why people couldn't separate the two. You know, I couldn't understand why people couldn't say, hey, what she did was wrong and the charitable acts that she did were great and they're mutually exclusive. You know, I couldn't um, I asked that question like, hey, well, how come people couldn't view the fact that, you know, she was wrong and also did, you know, well for the community and did well for herself at that. Um, and one particular person said, you know, a lot of people like the Robin Hood, you know, aspect of it. I think a lot of people um, don't, they, they like the whole idea of stealing from the rich, give back to the poor type of thing. And I responded to that and I said, I personally feel like that isn't necessarily the case, necessarily the case. Uh, where I agree with that point is I think people do feel like, hey, to see this person, this average Joe like you or me, um, do well for the community um, and do really nice things uh, for people and see her and put a face to her. You can follow her on social media. You can look up videos of her. You can see who she is. She's from Philly. She's from an urban environment. And she is she looks like you and me. You know, um, she's an average Joe. And I don't mean that from a race thing. She doesn't, you know, you don't have to be a black woman or just be black in general. But what I mean is, for the most part, I know she's an entrepreneur. I know she has her own business. But for the most part, she's a person. You know, she 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 puts her she puts her pants on the same way we do. She breathes the same air the same way we do. And she's just a normal person. And I think when we can humanize somebody like that, we can relate to them on a level and and almost kind of form this bond where we like, hey, I appreciate this person. So as you take a look at the government, um, very, very, very few of us, unless we're in the political field, can put a face to the name. You know, we look at the government as this faceless, biteless entity um, with a group of people or a person sitting behind a cherry wood desk in a pinstripe suit with a really thick tie on with a cigar in their mouth with wads of cash in their hand cackling with thunder striking and lightning striking behind them with a skinless cat in their lap and they're just stroking the cat you know they view a lot of people who don't know and i blame ignorance for that um and that's another topic topic for another day but i blame ignorance for that we don't know much about something when something isn't in your monkey sphere and you can't put a face to it you automatically go on the side of the people, right? Because the people, you can kind of relate to that. And I want to be very clear. I'm not siding with the government here. I'm not siding with Saudi here. I'm just giving my opinion on an observation from what I've witnessed in the past. Uh, when you can't put a face to the government, you kind of think that they're out to get to, get to you because you can't relate. You can't relate to them, you know? And that being said, I think... A lot of people are like that with any authority figure, whether it be police, like law enforcement, whether it be a judge, whether it be the government in general, whether it be your boss at work, whether it even be your parents at sometimes, anyone that you have to answer to. Sometimes you have this innate, you know, impulse to just rebel against that, to rebel against authority. And I think when someone sees a person and you can look at it as all three levels. Another person, an average Joe, that anybody, white, black, Asian, you know, Hispanic, can look at and relate to. Then you can take a look at, at a woman who's relatively young and, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So you have a lot of young adults who can relate to. Then you look at a woman of color, specifically a black woman, a lot of minorities can relate to and a lot of women in particular can relate to. So when you see all these things, she's also an entrepreneur. She's a restaurant owner. So you take a look at all these the different demographics who can relate to her and none of which can relate to the government because this government to them is this faceless, bodyless thing. Obviously, you're going to feel for and try to defend this person. You know what I mean? Um, it's really easy to do that. Um, when you try to return something at a store and it's out of policy and the store doesn't let you do it and you go back and tell your friends or family members about it, your friends and family members are, members are going to look at like, Hey, here's Joe or here's Jane versus Macy's or versus Burger King or versus Walmart. They don't look at it at 
here's Joe or Jane versus Bill or Mary, the manager at this place. They don't look at it that way. They look at it as like this person I can put a face to versus this faceless, nameless thing. And I think that's where a lot of this defending Saudi comes from. Um, to share my opinion on it, I think it's first and foremost what she did was wrong. What she did was wrong, and I think it sucks. Um, someone else who commented on a video, again, go go check out the video that I did, and go check out a lot of the comments, some really, really good comments. Uh, one of my friends, uh, Al, posted that he gets really, really frustrated when black people, specifically, you know, black, you know, women, in this case, um, stick there like you know are involved in some trouble because it diminishes our reputation right because then it looks like we can't do good things without being bad or we can't do things without we can't do good things without you know manipulating the system in some way shape or form and it really diminishes the act and i agree with that you know for you know think about so many positive people out there like a oprah or a denzel washington or even hell even a barack obama where you take a look at these prominent people and they've done really, really well for themselves. They've done well for the community. They've built schools. Look at LeBron James, built schools, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, think about how much more viable acts like that are when it makes news because of the act. It doesn't make news because of what they're doing. So, for example, you know, you don't see... Like you take a look at someone like Saudia who's bragging and flaunting on social media about the things that she's done uh, versus somebody like LeBron where, you know, him building his school in Ohio made national news because of the act, not necessarily because he's bragging and flaunting on social media like Saudia was. Not to say that he didn't take the social media to point out what he did, but it wasn't in a very obnoxious, braggadocious way, right? And just to go back to my friend Al's point about how what she did is a bit diminished. It's a bit diminished because now you have this fraud, this tax evasion thing coming, and now it's going to pervert the good acts that she did. Um, and then you got a lot of people who are like, hey, she shouldn't be held accountable because a lot of people who make the laws break them too. A lot of CEOs and politicians, the same people who make these laws and enforce these laws, are the same ones committing fraud. She faces a maximum sentence of 140 years in federal prison. And a lot of people are like, well, hey, you have other political figures who only get 10 to 15 years. Why is she getting a maximum of 140 years? I will say reading is fundamental and say it uses and say it uses the words maximum sentence. So, of course, that's the most she could get. I also will sit here and say that I'm not a law major. I don't practice law and I don't know the specifics of all of the charges brought against her. So I can't sit here and say, oh, that's messed up because I don't know. I don't know. I can't compare one case to another. And I'm willing to sit here and say, I don't know, you know, and it kind of got me to thinking. It kind of got me to thinking about the people who are defending her, you know, the majority of which are black and a lot of them are black women and, um, you know, black men, too. I want to get that out there, you know, but, you know, I've seen more posts from black women than black men. And the, the main argument was, hey, for all of you black people out there and for everyone else bashing Saudia, uh, you know, don't act like you're without fault as well. You know, how many of y'all claimed other people kids on your income tax? How many of y'all, you know, steal cable? How many of y'all have hacked or jailbroken phones or Amazon Fire TV sticks? How many of y'all, you know, you know, to manipulate return policies of stores, et cetera, et cetera. So they're basically saying that anyone who thinks Saudi was wrong isn't allowed to think that because they've committed, they may have committed fraud themselves or may have committed, you know, unsavory acts themselves. So they're not allowed to have an opinion. Doesn't really make much sense to me at all. Um, and then it kind of got me thinking even deeper than that. And it got me thinking about accountability within the black community. And I think like, you know, whenever something like this happens, if you don't defend the black person, you're automatically viewed as an Uncle Tom. You're viewed as you're not for your race. You're viewed as, um, you know, somebody who doesn't support their 
race. You're viewed as, you know, a white supremacist. You're viewed as a black basher. You're, you're viewed as someone who supports, who doesn't support the black community. Um, I even had a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, uh, compare me to, you know, I think the guy's name was Uncle Ruckus off the boondocks. It was funny, but the point still remains that he compared me to this person because I said what Saudi did was wrong and she should be penalized for it. So, you, you, uh, you know, a lot of the irony in black people, so, you know, saying that we don't support others when they're wrong is the fact that they're bashing us for having an opinion. I think that's really ironic. But anyway, if you don't support Saudi, you get viewed as an Uncle Tom and someone who doesn't support the black community. And then like you, you kind of like... And for the ones that are supporting her, it's kind of like, hey, well, I'm going to overlook what she did because she's black and she shouldn't be penalized because she's black or she's or rather, I'm sorry, she's being penalized because she's black. I even had one particular a friend comment on the video that I posted and she said that although she believes what Saudi did was wrong, she believes that they're trying to make an example out of her. And when I said, well, hey, what do you, who do you mean? What do you mean by they? And I put they in quotation marks. She said, hey, who, what do you mean by they? And she says, white people, the white government. And that's her opinion. That's her belief. She needs to believe that. And that's fine. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and be ignorant and say that, you know, obviously the laws in this country. I mean, look at, at the amendments. Right. We have an amendment that basically say us as black people, we can vote now. Like why that wasn't included in the Constitution it's because we weren't considered as actual human beings, we were considered three fifths of a human. So I won't sit here and and sit and, and be ignorant to the fact that a lot of our laws are racist and um, in nature, rather. So the people who enforce them aren't racist, but the people who created them they have they have a racist undertone. I can sit here and say the Constitution of the United States of America, when it was written, minorities, uh, black people, immigrants were not being considered when this. Uh, document was being written. Um, so I can sit here and say that. So I want to be clear to all, all of my, you know, black activists out there and all my hoteps out there that are listening. I'm not sitting here saying that, you know, um, secret agenda, agendas, hidden agendas, uh, don't exist. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say that. But, um, it's going back to my friend's comment when she said, like, white people to white government. And my first thought was, it's a shame that she believes this, although it is her right. And I kind of looked at that sideways and went, OK, so there are no black people in the government. The government is completely, you know, judge, judges, juries, law enforcers, lawmakers, congressmen and women are all white. There are no black ones. You know, that's clearly not the case. So are you saying, you know, the black government is totally against, you know, penalizing her for breaking the law and it's just the white government that wants to make an example out of her? And it just got me really frustrated because I'm like, you know, what is it with accountability in the black community? Why don't we want to admit when one of our own does something wrong? Why are we quick to defend them and saying, hey, it's OK what they did? And why is it that when some of us do stand up and say, no, what she did was wrong and she should be penalized about it, you know, penalized for it. We all get, you know, labeled as Uncle Tom. So my next two guests on the Idle Thoughts segment, I wanted to center center it around accountability within the black community and I asked some really tough questions and I wanted to get their opinion and some insight on why they think it is and what we can do as a black community to kind of like just bring the argument to a more you know closer to uh or closer to rather um accountability and how we can hold ourselves accountable a little bit more I would love to hear you guys' opinion on the video that I did. If you haven't checked out the video yet, go check out the video and please leave a comment. I would love to reply. I replied to most of the comments on here. Um, and feel free to write in or call in or tweet in or, you know, DM into the show, please. I would love to hear your opinion. I know a lot of you, specifically my coworkers, a lot of my coworkers listen and they have the luxury of seeing me every day. So they have a luxury of, you know, voicing their opinions face to face. And I really like to talk about the opinions on the show. But for all of you who don't have that opportunity to see me every day, or for all of you who don't have the opportunity to just shoot me a text or call me on the phone, 
please, please feel free to reach out to me because I would love, love, love to hear your opinion. So the, the first guest uh, is a good friend of mine by the name of Maud. Uh, I've worked with Maud for quite some time. I've known Maud for over 10 years now, and I've known Maud since basically I was an adult, since I became an adult. And she shared some insight on her experiences with accountability. And she talked a little bit about, you know, why it's important to hold people accountable. And she also says it's very important to remain objective. So without further ado, here's Maud. And here's the first interview in the Idle Thoughts segment. Check this out. Hello, everyone. Tim here. Welcome back to another episode and another segment of Idle Thoughts. Thanks for sticking around another week. This time around, we have another really good friend of mine. I know you guys are starting to notice a trend. It's not on purpose, I promise. But we have another good friend of mine by the name of Maud. Maud, I'm so excited to have you on the show. How are you? I'm great, Tim. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I am so excited. You do not know how big the smile is on my face right now. Um, I'm pretty excited to get the interview underway, and I know you're a very passionate, very opinionated person, and I couldn't wait to have you on to not only give a woman's perspective, but just give a perspective on, you know, based on your life experiences. So um, I'm not too sure if you kept up with the news lately, but um, there has been um, a young lady by the name of Saudia Schuler. Uh, who has apparently done a lot for the community and, um, you know, was blown up over social media, was recently uh, caught for uh, fraud, withholding funds from the government. And it posed the question of uh, accountability within the black community. A lot of people want to give her a pass. A lot of people don't want to give her a pass. Um, and it kind of got me to thinking about, you know, accountability within the black community and how far we're willing to go. Um, and just to dive right into it, um, you know, with so much oppression and the deconstruction of who we are as a people in our history and in the history of this country, um, the line uh, can be blurred between blaming our, our oppressors and blaming ourselves. When do you think it is appropriate to do one or the other? Well, with everything, um, it always comes down to context, but... Unfortunately, that's not a reality. Things should come down to context, and they don't. So with um, with Saudia, that's a really good example, where the issue with our, like, blaming ourselves or blaming the oppressor. So the basic facts are this woman, uh, she, I believe it was, like, 25 grand that she had spent on gifts and just helping the community. And she was really praised for it. It was really, it was really a good thing that she had done for the community. But the basic facts are this woman uh, used $25,000 um, that she managed to accrue from uh, disability pay, but she also was making money but not claiming the income from a full-on restaurant business. And mm -hmm. because of the disability pay, like, that's a number, like, objectively, she did the wrong things. She was living off of disability while claiming she could not work, but on the, on the other hand, fully working full-time and also not claiming that income, so tax fraud as well. And we keep running into this instance where um, black people will commit transgressions and the immediate instinct isn't, let's look at this as it is, this person was right or this person was wrong. It always turns into well, white people do it and get away with it all the time. It isn't so much even about blaming the oppressor as they get away with it so we should be allowed to get away with it as opposed to everyone should be punished. And that's kind of where the lines blur on when it's appropriate because appropriateness is based on I guess what you what your desired outcome would be. So would it be appropriate for her to 
be punished for the crimes that she is unquestionable. Like, no one's saying she did not do these things. She did them. <laughs> That's how she was able to help the community, was that she mm-hmm. did these things. And some people are trying to frame it as, like, a Robin Hood thing, where she, you know, was stealing from the corrupt government to help the kids. Okay. She did. But she still did something wrong. And But they're not even fully framing it that way. They're framing it in the, well, she did this crime and helped good people, but because she's black, she's being punished for it. She should get away with it because white people do the same thing, but don't help people. So white people get away with it, so we should get away with it. Not trying to change the narrative or reality that all wrongs should be punished. There shouldn't be exceptions to wrong, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, absolutely it does. And you touched on a lot, a lot of key areas there, and I think it really boils down to choice of belief, um, what you choose to believe. And I think people are going to believe whatever they want to believe in order to justify their actions. Uh, but at the same time, it really brings up the question, is it ignorance or is it denial? So um, in your opinion, when accountability is appropriate, and we avoid it, how often do you think it's due to ignorance or how often is it denial? That's a case-by-case thing because it's actually three parts. There's ignorance, there's denial, and there's willful ignorance where they, like, ignorance is just full-on, did not know the information, did not know the context, and so have made a judgment based on the lack of information that they have. Denial is they have received all of the pertinent information but choose to base their feelings and their decisions on not believing it or just choosing to ignore it. And willful ignorance is just straight up that. It's it's not that you know that there is more to it. It's that you are aware that knowing more can probably change your opinion, but you don't want to. You feel like, like with Saudia, people just see, oh, this woman helped the community. But if they're like, well, you know, here are things, but like she didn't just help the community. There may be some like shady stuff she did. She may have helped, the, she may have used all that money at the front to, you know, look really good and have support behind her because no one's going to turn in the neighborhood person who's helping the kids. Like everybody has that, like, there's that, you know, that auntie or uncle on the corner that does some slightly shady stuff that that dude that fixes everything for twenty dollars or um like you <laughs> <laughs> like if your phone like before um like Apple got rid of the um third party fixing. Like pe- people like had that person and they're like, Oh, I can totally like fix up your screen so that it'll still like whatever's wrong with your phone, I can make it look not as bad so it can be under warranty again. If it's something that you feel like is a community effort or a charity, no one's going to, like, turn that person in. You feel like it's it's a victimless crime, and they're, they have good intentions. But when you start to fit in, oh, there may be other things. Maybe she was, you know, do it like she was living a lavish lifestyle. Like, she just figured out a way to cheat the system and get all this money, and a way to get people to, you know, not tell on her is help the community. I'm not saying that's what that is. But that's where willful ignorance comes in, where anything past the narrative that they enjoy is possible to come in. They're like, nope, nope, don't need to hear more. Don't. I, I've based the opinion on what I know. I, I like what I hear, and that's what I'm going to stick to. So accountability just kind of comes down to, you said it before, belief. And not just belief in the knowledge that people have. It's belief in what people want. It's belief in how people want to see the world. And some people try to be as objective as possible, and they'll take all the information they can, and they wind up being Debbie Downers because they are always coming in with, like, oh, here's the, like, that's a really nice thing you have here, but here's the negative facts about it. Like, dolphins are really cute and smart and intelligent. Dolphins are also jerks. (laughs) Of the animal <laughs> king. <laughs> uh, but no one wants to hear about all the bad behavior dolphins have. Everybody wants to go swimming with the dolphins. So, yeah, it's a, it's hard for the black community to 
really accept accountability when it really comes down to no one else has to. It's always us. We always have to self-police. And it hits a point for people where we're just like, you know what? Like, no one's going to give us that leeway that everyone else is getting, so we'll just give it to ourselves. So accountability just kind of goes down the drain at that point. Wow. And I think you made a lot of great points there. And you also listed some of the biggest challenges. And, again, piggybacks off of the whole um, – or adds on to the whole – a belief system on what you're willing to believe. And you're absolutely right. You have the, I think the most interesting point to me, and that was the whole willful ignorance thing, where you know there could be more to it, but you choose, you willingly choose not to investigate further because you've heard and or seen everything that you needed to hear or see. Uh, so you don't need to investigate further. And that's really, really powerful. I would love to dive into that a little bit more um, on a future interview. I think that's so dope. Um, well, hey, Ma, I knew this would be a pleasure, and, and it has been so far, and I can't wait uh, for everyone to hear this interview, and I'm looking uh, forward to getting everyone responses to this interview, just to hear what they have to say, because you made some pretty interesting points. Um, I always tell everybody that I get a chance to interview that I kind of have a sinister agenda behind these interviews, and it, uh, a part of that is just to talk to people that I don't get to talk to often, so... Uh, although I did want to get your opinion, it was also nice to hear from you because we don't talk too often outside of social media. So it was always a pleasure uh, to speak to you. Um, it's great to hear from you, Ma. By the way, everyone, Ma's calling all the way from California, so there's a three-hour time difference. So I stayed up really, really late just to just to hear from Ma. So uh, thank you so much, Ma, for calling in. Thank you for giving your two cents, and I really appreciate the call. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, and it was fun. I Gladly do this again. It was good talking to you. Hey, thanks again, Maud, for tuning in. I know you've been supporting the show for quite some time. I know you've been listening to the show for quite some time. And I just want to say thank you. And I was really, really giddy about having you on the show. It's always cool to not only catch up with old friends, but to have longtime listeners on the show. Uh, so, hey, guys, tell me what you think of some of Maud's comments. Tell me what you think about the interview. Uh, feel free to reach out. Our next guest is also... A long-time listener. She's been listening since episode one. And fun fact, she was actually the very, very first person to email into the show to express her opinion um, regarding episode one of the show. Although episode one isn't up on any of the uh, podcast or audio sites, you can check that out on um, uh, YouTube. So check that out on YouTube. But this next guest uh, by the name of Bree. Bree is a close friend of mine, and she's been listening for quite some time. She also shared her thoughts on accountability within the black community and her experiences uh, with accountability within the black community. Here's Bree. Check this out. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This time around, we have a, another longtime listener of the show here for the Idle Thoughts segment to share some of her thoughts on this week's topics. This time around, we have Bree. Hey, Bree, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, the cool thing about this interview in particular is, if I'm not mistaken, you were the very, very first person to interview into the show way back on episode one. Do you remember that? I do. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to have you stick, uh, for sticking around so long, and I really appreciate you deciding to bless me with your presence on the show. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Without further ado... Uh, just to dive right into the uh, questions here, um, you know, there's a lot going on this week uh, with the whole Saudia Schuler. I'm sure I'm sure you've caught up on this story. It's been everywhere, uh, social media news, uh, and it, it made national news at that. Um, and a lot of people are talking about it. So I definitely wanted to center the question, uh, the topics, uh, and the questions around her situation. And I noticed that there are a lot of people on both sides of the fence. There are some people who I feel like she shouldn't be held accountable. Uh, there are some people who feel like she should. Uh, usually the people who feel like she should be held accountable uh, are on the law side, essentially saying it doesn't matter who it is, wrong or it's wrong. The people who feel like she shouldn't be held accountable are on the race side. And they're saying, you know, hey, this is a strong black woman. She's done well for the community. She shouldn't be held accountable. Uh, when is it uh, appropriate to blame, you know, our oppressors, uh, or when is it appropriate to blame ourselves? Well, I think that you always have to take both things into account. 
but obviously, like, there are systems in place that may make it harder for, you know, people of certain races to do certain things, or, you know, there are people who have certain prejudices against different races, which obviously makes it harder, but you kind of can't change those things necessarily. I think you always have to accept personal responsibility for things that you do. So in this situation, like, even though, you know, yes, she might be a strong black woman and, you know, may have been trying to help her community, she also is, like, technically breaking the law. So there is still a legal system in place that, you know, may have things that sometimes seem like they're oppressing one race over the other. I think at the same time, you still have to take responsibility for your actions and, you know, accept things that you may have been doing to contribute to how you're being perceived. That's a well, a very well-rounded way of looking at it, and uh, most people struggle with that for some reason. Some people can't separate the two, um, and I think it's one of those things where people are choosing to believe what they want to believe just to kind of, like, help them. Um, mm-hmm. how, how often do you think, like, people uh, within our community, black, the black community, we don't hold each other accountable? How much of it do you think is due to ignorance? How much of it do you think is due to denial? I also think it's both for that as well. Um, I well, just a quick story. Um, I was actually watching a YouTube video uh, for someone who was, um, it was a black man who works in the medical field, and he was basically just explaining why he lost his job. And he just, you know, went on a whole story about basically he was late two times in the first week and was also caught using his cell phone. And he was, you know, was actually taking responsibility for his actions and was saying, you know, like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But I happened to read the comments and there were, you know, tons of people commenting like, you know, oh, you have to be careful. Like, they're always trying to get a black man down and, you know, oh, you know, you have to try twice as hard. And I'm like, no, you were late. Like, your job has a system in place where you need to be on time. You're doing something important. Time is valuable. Like, you just have to accept responsibility for that. And it seemed like the person making the video did do that, but it was just strange how quick people were to kind of take the blame off of him. So I guess it just makes it easier to, you know, put the blame on someone else or something else or, oh, you know, there's this thing in place that's getting me down when it's like, no, you actually do have to accept responsibility for your actions, even if there are systems in place that may make it harder for you. That was a pretty cool story. And you oftentimes see that a lot. You see uh, people wanting to be someone else's savior and uh, trying to basically launch a social media crusade uh, to save this person. Even when the person is like, no, I'm taking responsibility for my actions. No, this was wrong. You almost kind of get people who feel like it doesn't matter. You know, you look like me, so I'm going to defend you. I'm not really concerned about some of the things that you've done. With that being said, it seems like there are a lot of challenges uh, within several communities in particular the black community, when it comes to holding each other accountable, what would you say is the biggest challenge that comes with holding each other's accountable? Uh, that is actually a tough question. Um, so I think that there are, a, like, it kind of just depends on the person. There are a lot of different reasons why, um, you know, someone might not want to be held accountable for their actions or, you know, might be hesitant to hold another black person accountable for their actions. Um, I think maybe just not accepting the first part of the answer is, or the first question, which is just, you know, there are things in place that might make it harder for certain races to have certain things, and there are certain prejudices that some people might have that you can't really change, which is kind of understanding that you have to go sometimes above and beyond that to, you know, give people a different impression of you. You can only control your actions and what you're doing. Um, So rather than focusing on maybe what someone else might be thinking or, you know, what systems are in place that might make it harder for you, um, I think it's important to just focus on, you know, like the stuff that you actually can change. Um, It's why I know you have an episode about mental health, but I do think mental health is really important in the black community and just, you know, understanding like yourself and understanding, you know, like what you are responsible for and just not constantly having a negative view of, you know, oh, they're out to get me or, you know, there's this 
outside force that is influencing everything, just having someone that maybe, you know, you can talk to can help you accept the things that you are responsible for. You usually have two two extremes. You have the people out there who feel like uh, there aren't – their laws in general weren't based to uh, keep certain people of certain color and certain cultures away from certain things. They're kind of living in this uh, blissful ignorance uh, where they don't want to accept it. But on the flip side of that, you have people who cry wolf at every act against them as uh, something that's race, racial or oppressive, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that, to your point, if we can find a way to meet the middle and understand that both realities are true, just not as extreme, I think it can kind of help us uh, walk through everyday life a little bit better. Um, very well said, Bree. I really appreciate you sharing your points, and I really appreciate you sticking around since January of this year, since week since week one, since episode one. So, uh, Bree, uh, one last bonus question here. I know you kind of weren't mm-hmm. expecting this, but yeah, you you you've been listening for a very long time. Um, are there uh, any topics or anything that maybe happened recently that you would like to hear discussed on the show? Um. Oh wow, that's a really tough question. <laughs> Um, I think maybe something related to music. I thought the J. Cole episode was cool. So if there's any albums you want to review, that might be cool. Uh, so you think I should do more album reviews? I think so. That could be that, you know, especially depending on the album, that could lead to a lot of different topics to discuss just within music. There's like, you know, so much going on in music right now. So that could be cool. I agree. Nicki Minaj did just come out with a new album. Maybe, maybe I'll review that. And by the time next week comes around, it'll, it'll been out for a week. And you know, who knows? Well, thank you for that, Bree. I really appreciate you coming on, and I can't wait to talk to you in the future. Sure, no problem. Thanks again, Bree, uh, for not only listening but just sharing your thoughts on the show. I really appreciate it. It was really cool to finally have you on the show, and you did well for your very first interview. So thank you. Shout out to Ma too. Uh, it's nice to have more ladies featured on the show. Uh, I've been getting a lot of feedback from a lot of the ladies who say, hey, we want to hear our voices heard. We want to hear more ladies on the show. I totally agree. I would encourage you all and insist that you all be like Maude and be like Bree. Both of them reached out on their own to be on the show. I want you guys to know that. Every single last uh, person who's been on the show, for the most part, has reached out to me personally, uh, not not counting the businesses that I featured on the show. Uh, the guests that I have featured on the show reached out to me personally for the most part, uh, and they wanted to be on the show. So be like Bree, be like Maude, uh, and be like our previous guests, and um, come on the show, uh, express your thoughts. And I want to be I want to be very very clear. Uh, my buddy Ryan mentioned it earlier. I do not bite. I have a very open mind. So even if you get on the show and you disagree with me, please feel free. It'll add some excitement. It'll add some drama. And hopefully uh, we can come to an agreement towards the end of the conversation. So feel free to come onto the show. Thanks again to our guests. And I want to say thanks again to our future guests, even though they haven't been on yet, because I'm looking forward to having them on the show. In the meantime, guys, I got to get ready for work. It's time for me to get going. And uh, I got a busy, busy day ahead of me. In the meantime, everybody, as a reminder, uh, feel free to share any of these, uh, whether you listen on Spotify, whether you listen on iHeartRadio, whether you listen on Google Play or iTunes, etc., etc. Feel free to share these uh, episodes, not so I can get more fame or glory, but just so these conversations can be ha- uh, held within our peer group and our community. Because I think uh, a lot of these topics, a lot of people think about and they only really express them on social media. We don't really talk about them in person. We need to uh, create a safe space to have intelligent and mature conversations in person. Uh, So feel free to share these. Feel free to share the videos I post online and feel free to write into the show. Uh, In the meantime, everybody, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in another week. And as always, I'll keep talking if you'll listen. Take care, everybody.